the posterior urethra. The posterior urethra, extending from the anterior layer of the triangular ligament to the bladder, presents many notable points of contrast with the anterior urethra. The canal is no longer surrounded by erectile tissue, and indeed, it could scarcely become erect, for whereas the anterior urethra is freely movable with the penis, the posterior urethra possesses a fixed curve, of which later. Moreover, the posterior urethra is, in its normal state, entirely free from the bacteria harbored by the anterior urethra. It is the lowest section of the aseptic internal urinary tract. The posterior urethra is divided into the membranous and the prostatic urethra and the trigone of the bladder. The membranous urethra. Of all parts of the canal, the membranous urethra is the most fixed, running as it does from the aperture in the anterior layer of the triangular ligament to the aperture in the posterior layer. Its mucous membrane, though of a darker color and much more sensitive, does not differ in structure from that of the anterior urethra. This in turn is surrounded by a thin layer of unstriped muscle, but instead of being sheathed in the corpus spongiosum, it is embedded in the voluntary muscle that fills the space between the two layers of the triangular ligament. This muscle has had special names given to different portions of it by Guthrie, Mueller, Wilson, and others, but it may be considered clinically as one muscle. The constrictor or compressor urethrae, the cutoff muscle, the external or voluntary sphincter of the bladder. The last term best expresses its function. It is the muscle by which the outflow of urine from the bladder is voluntarily opposed. It may suffer from spasm, and so not only prevent urination, but also prevent a serious obstacle to the introduction of instruments. This is spasmodic stricture. The prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra tunnels the prostate, sometimes barely covered by that organ above, sometimes deeply embedded in it, figure 18. It is fixed only where it joins the membranous urethra. It is fusiform in shape, being closed internally by the internal or involuntary sphincter of the bladder. Into it, the ducts of the sexual organs empty. It is lined by squamous epithelium, like that of the bladder, and is liable to great deformity and obstruction by prostatism. Upon its floor rises a little mass of erectile tissue, the verumontanum, or caput gallinaginus, the anterior slope of which is hollowed out into a little cavity, the sinus pocularis, or utricle, figure 16. The prostatic ducts open upon the floor of the urethra on each side of the verumontanum. The ejaculatory ducts usually open in the sinus pocularis or on its edges. Figure 16, lower part of the male bladder with the beginning of the urethra, exposed by incising the anterior wall and laying it open. Three, ureter. Four, opening of the ureter. Two, vas deferens. Nine, verumontanum. Seven, center of trigone. 8. Section of prostate. 10. Orifice of the common ejaculatory duct. 11. Opening of utricle. 12. Mouths of prostate gland ducts. 1. Interureteric fold.